Hi, I'm Mike Ratcliffe, and I'm the Chief Knowledge Officer of Full and Company. I've been involved in consulting in competitive intelligence for some 20 odd years. And I'd like to share some of my learnings over these years with you in this series of five short videos about the key aspects of competitive intelligence. In the first video, I talked about what is competitive intelligence. In the second, I covered the forces that are both external to the market and also those forces that are internal and hence really drive competition. In the third, I talked about the rivals, the competitors themselves, and in the fourth, some of the aspects of doing research. And in this last of the series, I talk about analysis and especially workshops, as well as the value of CI. In my first video, I said that the process of CI can be illustrated by this simple flow diagram, where after research has been completed, analysis turns findings into intelligence. The reality is this is not quite true. It's true for the final analysis, but there's actually analysis that goes on through the whole of this process. Once you've agreed the goals of the project, you need to review what information you have on hand, such as internal knowledge that you or your client's company has undertaken, or readily available secondary research. You need to analyze this to understand what the research issues are likely to be, how best to address them, and where to research. And this will help you identify what the key intelligence questions or KIQs, kicks, should be. Once you've completed the research on these kicks, then you need to complete the analysis to understand what your recommendations on actions will be. But when you present these to your champion, it's likely that you'll need another round of analysis, including the champion to make sure that you really have addressed the issues that were set out at the start of the project. In other words, you really don't stop analyzing as you progress through the whole of the research project. From my experience, it's all too easy to kick off a project without really understanding the key issues, which then only raise their heads later in the project. And this could easily mean that your earlier work has been misdirected or that you've actually failed to go and set up a monitoring project in the right way. And you don't have a useful baseline pitch that's been put together at the start of the project so you can really understand how your target companies have changed over time. As I said in an earlier video, I find that many of our projects really need to understand what's happening in both the external and internal forces, the Pestel and Porter forces. So for instance, we regularly are finding that we're having to take a look at the Pestel forces and how they're impacting the competitive environment that we're looking at, not just at the internal forces. For instance, on one project, we are asked to understand how competitors were reacting to eliminating the forever chemicals or PFAS from their products, meaning that you have to understand virtually all the Pestel forces. In others, we were asked to take a look at just the ESG framework, which is impacting the competitive behavior of key markets and their financials, where ESG refers to E for environment, F for social, and G for governance. Whilst the 500 pound gorilla of external forces at the moment is net zero emissions or NZE. This is impacting virtually every market around the world with international goals to go and reach NZE by 2050. And we're finding that we're regularly having to understand how individual companies are attempting to meet this goal and hence compete. Some of them have very aggressive plans like Amazon Web Services or AWS who are well ahead of their targets and expect to go and reach their NZE targets by 2030. Whilst many others are scrambling with no clear path to reach even 80% of NZE by 2050. And understanding the real status of individual companies can be absolutely essential background intelligence as we researched key aspects of these companies' strategies and tactics. In earlier videos, I often mentioned disruptors and how essential it is in today's market to keep a vigilant eye out for them in any market that you're researching. A disruptor could be a relatively new startup with a revolutionary technology, which is rapidly gaining traction in the market you're researching. Or it could actually be an established firm that suddenly makes an acquisition of a competitor and radically changes the balance of power in your or your client's market. 
as you will in general not find out about such acquisitions until they hit the press, you really have no forewarning. And clearly you have to go and revise your kicks and very likely build up some new primary research to really understand the implications. And you know, this is where really good analysis becomes important because acquisitions don't always turn out to be a competitive threat. It can actually become a really great opportunity for you or your client's company. All too often, the acquirer can find serious issues with the acquisition or have indigestion, just merging the two organizations together, both of which can actually create these opportunities. Targeted research and careful analysis can point to serious issues that the acquirer is having. And as I say, great opportunities for you or your client to attack. And this is definitely one of those situations where you need fast actions, as those actions can all too easily become fish. As I talked about in earlier videos, as your target competitor will be working as hard as they can to rectify issues and so close the windows of opportunity for you to take advantage of. As I said in the last video, over the past 10 to 20 years, the use of computers to do research and collect data on companies has become mainstream. As AI tools have improved, software programs have made leaps and bounds in their ability to go and help with analysis. They can help identify trends over time, look for changes in web pages and online prices. And if there are databases of conversations with clients and hence potential references to competitors, computers can be used to come pull these out using AI and large language models. They can also be used to analyze sentiment data on specific products or services. And we in Ford have developed a suite of AI programs to help clients position their products or services competitively to gain five-star ratings using these computer-based analytical tools. And if you'd like any more details about this, please feel free to contact me. One of the most powerful analytical tools is workshops. The various types of workshops with the most common used in CI being the war game, or sometimes called competitive simulation, if the client is concerned about the military connotations of war games. We run these and facilitate them all the time for clients. Attendees can be between 20 or 30 strong, and we break them up into teams, each representing a different competitor. We provide high value briefing books for each team, so every individual participant can get up to the same level of understanding on each target competitor. We run these teams through a series of analyses and readouts, with the analyses being done in breakout rooms and the readouts being done in plenary sessions where everybody can comment. Because these are a combination of the best internal knowledge from the client, plus research done by us on the market and the target competitors, the results can be exceptionally high value thanks to this group analysis. Workshops can also be very effective to develop tactical battle cards, as well as company strategies, where it's not clear which market segment the company should be attacking first relative to the competitors. And they can also be used for long-term strategic planning through scenario analyses. And if necessary, complex early warning systems can be built to track markets and identify changes in strategic directions by both the market itself and also individual groups of players. One of the great benefits of workshops is that they allow a large number of managers within a company to communally analyze a competitive situation. And as a result, all the attendees are aligned with the process and why they got to that final decision, even though some of them may not actually agree 100% with all the results. But this alignment I see is extremely valuable. Now, I'd like to end this video by just touching on the topic of the value of competitive intelligence. There's always been an issue around the return on investment or ROI for, for a CI program. And it's often very difficult to measure, especially if one's tracking a relatively stable market. Often the value comes when there's disruption and hence major threats or opportunities arise, which to be honest in today's marketplace is happening more and more frequently. I personally have been involved in projects which have delivered well over $1 billion of value to the cloud because they've managed to go and help them take the right decisions to maximize revenue 
rather than being forced to go and take other routes due to a disruptor and the competitive forces that they are trying to portray. As external consultants, we often in fold are generally brought in where a client sees an issue and needs a third party opinion. And perhaps this biases me somewhat, but I've often be amazed by the lack of understanding by clients of key strategies and threats from some of their direct competitors. So as a result, I often see that we deliver really high value or ROI. So once more, I need to go and bring one of these videos to an end. And in this case, it's going to be the whole series, which I hope you found of some value. I apologize if I've only managed to go and touch on certain aspects of competitive intelligence, but I hope I've given you a flavor of the complexity and value of CI. So if you'd like to contact me, feel free to email me at mratcliffe.com or just find me on LinkedIn. So many thanks for watching and cheers.